Hello and welcome to another Glenys Garnet Creative Images video. Textures. This one is all about how to use your own textures. What we're going to do is, I've opened a few here that I've got. I've got a nice wood background, I think an old barn door or something. A little bit of grungy, rusty stuff found somewhere. I'm not sure where that is. And this bottom one here is uh, an ICM. Um, an intentional camera movement uh, image and one thing to bear in mind if you like to do intentional camera movement uh, images then don't delete them because uh, the ones that don't turn out very well because they'll make really nice simple background textures and um, it's useful to keep a few of those because um, textures often need to be quite subtle in an image um the one thing you're going to see in this little tutorial is that um subtlety is everything when it comes to actually applying a, a texture to an image some textures can look a little bit too much and um can actually spoil the image so so um okay so we're going to get started now we've got here let's just i've just got a random image here that i've picked up just so we can see what the effects are so we're going to uh, look at this image here which is the icm image and what I do to all of my textures is I don't use them in the color in the color um, that the, the, they come in. Um, the reason for this is that it can actually add a cast to the text to the image that you, you, you're laying it over and you don't always want that. Um, and what you do want to do is be in control of the colouring and you can do that after you've applied the texture. So what we're going to do first with this one is going to go to um, adjustments and black and white. I'm just like go to black and white, click OK there. Now what I will do then is I'll just probably adjust the brightness a little, bring the brightness up a little bit, but take the contrast right back. Click that, that OK. Now that is how at this point. You'd save that in your little texture folder and um, uh, you've got it there. You know, obviously, whatever your naming convention is, you'll save it and um, and, and there you go. But what we're going to look at, and this is for people who use Creative Cloud, who are uh, subscribed to Lightroom and um, um, Photoshop. Uh, I'm sorry for those that don't use those two packages, but they are my my uh, packages of choice and just a little tip about Lightroom is when you bring all your images into Lightroom and you've been out taking images and you've got a few textures in there um, make sure you keyword anything that's potentially a background or a texture simply because it's easier then to 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 pull them all up in one go and you've got them there at hand when you need them um, for those that have got Adobe Creative Cloud we're going to use uh, a nice little tool if you've never used it. But what comes with Creative Cloud is you've got a little bit of storage available. And um, there's a, a thing called My Library or Libraries. And if we click on the window here, uh, if you go down to Libraries and click Libraries, uh, a little window will pop up. And it's where some of you, if you've downloaded some Adobe text, paper textures and things like that, it's where they will sit. Uh, but you, if you pop it onto your little um, shortcut bar here um, you can pull up you can you can start to put textures into your own libraries and you can actually store them in the creative cloud so that they're available to you whenever whenever you want wherever you go so if you log on on another computer that you use Photoshop then you've still got access to them in the creative cloud so you don't have to copy images from one computer to another with uh, textures from one computer to another so it's a really useful uh, little tool and if you look on on mine here, we've got my library. You can also save templates in this library as well. So if you do some temperature templates for calendars or anything like that, you can save them in, in, in your Creative Cloud library. And if we have a quick look at some of mine, I've got you've got the fly textures here, which are the free ones from Adobe, and we've got some textures that I've created here. Now I've not got all my textures in here, but um, I have got quite a few, and I've just created a, a little folder called Temp for Videos because that's where we're going to pop pop these when we've created them. Now coming back to the image, which we've we've turned into a black and white image, 
and we've uh, increased the brightness a little bit and the contrast. At this stage, obviously, you'd save that onto your hard drive. But for Creative Cloud users, I just want you to drag that onto your library there. And if we just change that name to, um, let's call it Water Flow 1 Gray, and that's it. And if we now open up that window with the image in it and all we need to do if we were just doing that if we're doing it from this point we just drag it onto the image but what we're going to do is we're going to drag it here from the library and just drop it into the library and then we're going to drag that click on there and then we're going to drop it on as a an overlay or a soft layer soft light whichever you find is is the best for the image and if we just click and hide and bring that layer back you'll see that's the layer on top of there now it doesn't end there what we're now going to do is we're now going to color this layer and that's dead easy to do we just go to image adjustments and hue saturation and we choose the colorize button here and what that will do is it will allow us to colorize it add any color we want and we're going to go let's go for a nice gaudy pink uh, and brighten that up a little bit bring the saturation up a little bit and then click ok and what we're going to do then is we're just going to drag it onto the library and we're going to call it water flow water flow one pink there we go and we'll go back to the image and then we're going to drag that onto the image and that's that there like that okay and we're going to drop that on as a probably a soft overlay so we've got a nice gray background and we've got a pink background uh, sorry textures now next what we're going to do is we're going to go to adjustments again hue saturation and this time we're going to choose like an orange we want a nice orange sunny orange type bring the lightness up a little bit no we'll just we'll just leave it at that at that layer and this time what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask on the layer. I'm going to make sure that your foreground and background is set to black and white. And pick up the brush. And we're going to brush away. I'm going to set it. We're set at 53% and 56 flow. That, sh that should be enough just to delete some of the background. We're just going to rub around that. We're going to be fairly random with this. We don't want to be too heavy. Or anything we just want to bring out some middle bit there and we might we might actually where the flower is I might bring a bit out there but this would be just a general purpose vignette type um, texture now what we're going to do then is we're going to drag that into the library and we're going to call this water flow and we're going to say V for vignette. There we go. And what we're going to do then is we're going to drag that onto the image. And click OK. Now we can go down and try some overlay or soft options on this. But I quite like just leaving it as it is and then just reducing the opacity. So just bring that down a little bit and keep some of that orange in there. Um, that's the sort of thing you can do just with one simple texture. Um, but what my suggestion is always to 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 change your textures into a a, a mono a grey colour to start with. So that's using those three textures that we've added to the Creative 
cloud. And obviously, you'd be saving these onto your, your own library of textures in, in your uh, on your hard drive. I mean, what the thing is about saving it into the Creative Cloud is it saves you up a little bit of space on your, your hard drive. Um, now, we're going to get rid of that layer. Let's save it. And we're just going to look, have a quick look at maybe this. We might look at the... Um, uh, we'll look at both of these layers, but I want to show you what the effect is of moving one of these layers onto your um, onto your image if you don't use a, um, a gray version. So we're just going to drag that onto the we're just going to drag that onto the image there, and we're going to just cover the whole the whole image there. Okay, now we can stick it on overlay. Now, this isn't necessarily the right texture for this image. It's just an example to show you what the effects are. And we can also go for soft light, which is a little bit more subtle, but you can see that we're actually getting some of that colouring coming through, which we don't always want. So my advice, again, would be to take this image, go to a adjustments, change it to black and white, and probably do the same again with brightness and contrast. Bring up the brightness a little bit and reduce the contrast completely. OK, and now we're going to drag that layer over on there again. And we're going to see the difference that makes. Now you may want some colouring, but I find it's better to do the colouring with my own textures anyway. It's better to do the colouring uh, when you've got a little bit more control over it by doing it yourself. So we're going to overlay that again as overlay, and we're going to we're going to look at both of these. I know it looks a bit fuzzy, it's because they'll be they'll be in slightly different places on the image. So first, look at the color version, which looks rather dirty and grungy, and then we're going to look at the black and white version, and you see that there's a subtle difference in those two. And if we also go to a soft light on that, it just makes the the texture a little bit more subtle and certainly far more subtle even if you go to soft light on that far more subtle now because we're picking up the, the color that we don't necessarily want uh, from the texture so that's um, another reason to change your texture to um, uh, to black and white and if we want to change the color of the texture while we've got it in there we can just go to the image adjustments Hue saturation, use the colorize again, and we can change the color overall of the texture rather than changing rather than picking up the color that you get from the there you go from there. And we've got a like a light, just switch that off, it's sort of gone a light purpley color, mauve color, but there you go. So that's two two ways of playing with the textures now the third one we're going to look at which is this I'll just pop that one away no and the third one we're going to look at is this wooden texture and again we can um, the wood you get to a feel for what they will look like when you put them on an image and, and a browny beigey color won't be as obvious on it as um, uh, as that grungy layer that we had just before. So you might not get too much of a colour cast with this, but I would still go and change that to black and white. And I would do the same on this. Adjust the levels and the brightness up. Bring the brightness up. Bring the contrast down. OK. And if we drag that over, you can see that's what we get. And of course, every time I create a new a new texture layer like this, I can drag it into the into the library. So if we click OK on there, and you'll see on that we get the soft light actually looks a little bit better. And that doesn't look too bad. Um, it's still not the right. Uh, it's not sort of a one I'd use for a, for an image like this. But if we look down, it almost looks a little bit like rain. So that's using that in black and white now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit of grunge or a little bit of darkness around the outside of this layer so 
I'm going to just pick up the burn tool and I'm going to um, leave it set at 100%. I'm just going to start burning around the edges on the mid tones. Just get it burning around the edges there just to darken it. Keep going just a little bit. You don't have to be too heavy, too light on this. You can just play about, just add some darkness to it. Keep going, building it up as you go. There we go. There, 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 that's it. And we might also take out, no, we'll leave that. We'll drag that into the, into the background there and then we'll drag that onto there and what we've got with this one is a slight darkening around the outside so if we pop that onto a soft light we've got almost like a, a vignette like effect along with that so you can see with your own textures even you can actually you've got quite a lot of flexibility uh, using your own textures and um, don't forget to have a play about with using the library and uh, creating your own and of course if you're using uh, if you don't use creative cloud then you, you obviously have to save them on your on your hard drive um, so get out taking textures you can you can take them of all sorts so there you go Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.